Welcome back to another session of TAE certification training. In last session, we covered the compatibility between TAS and SUT, and today we will explore the other consideration, which is synchronization between TAS and SUT. So let's begin. Let's start with synchronization of requirements. So the first point is develop SUT and TAS requirements after initial requirements gathering. Okay, so when we talk about initial requirements gathering, we mean the phase where we collect all the necessary information about what the software should do, how it should behave, and what features it should have. So this is the foundation of our entire project. Then the next point we have is TAS requirements can be categorized into two groups, TAS development requirements and testing requirements for the SUT. So let's go through an example to understand this point better. Okay, so let's first uh, have a look at our example scenario. So we are building a TAS for a mobile app testing. So imagine you are part of a team developing a test automation solution for testing a new mobile app. Okay, so think of TAS requirements as the instructions or guidelines that tell us how our TAS should work. So these requirements can be divided into two main groups, just like uh, we are sorting our toys into two different boxes. Okay, so the first one is TAS development requirements. So this is like the build the TAS box. So inside you will find requirements that will tell you how to create the TAS itself. And these requirements are about designing and building the TAS as a software based tool. So they include things like what features it should have, such as how it design tests, how it specifies those tests, and how it analyzes test results. So essentially this box contains instructions on how to make your testing tool. Okay, coming to the second box now. So we have testing requirements for the SUT. So this box is named as test the app box. So this box is all about how your TAS will interact with the mobile app you are testing. In this case, mobile app is our SUT. So inside this box, you will find requirements that explain how the TAS should test the app. These are like the instructions for using your TAS to test specific features and properties of the mobile app. It's like having a checklist that tells you what parts of the app to test and how to do it. Okay, so now why do we split our requirements into these two groups? It's a bit like organizing your toys to play a game. So the built, uh, the TAS box create uh, helps us to create a great testing tool. We need to know how the TAS should work internally so it's effective in doing its job. And the second one, the test the app box is important because it tells us how to use our TAS to test the mobile app correctly. It's like having a game plan for testing. So in our scenario, the first box helps us make the TAS and the second box helps us to use it effectively to test our mobile application. So I hope this concept is clear and now let's continue with the remaining synchronization of requirements points. And finally, the last point in synchronization of requirements is ensuring consistency and completeness. So whenever we make updates or changes to either the SUT or the TAS requirements, it's crucial to ensure consistency between the two sets of requirements. So this means we need to make sure that the TAS requirements align with the SUT's features and that there are no contradictions. In addition to that, it's also essential to check that all the SUT requirements that we plan to test using the TAS have corresponding and well-defined test requirements in the TAS documentation. So this step ensures that nothing gets missed and that our testing is comprehensive. Moving on, we have synchronization of development phases. So the first point we have here is coordinate development phases for timely TAS readiness. So this means making sure that different parts of our project work together smoothly. 
So one key reason we need to do this is to ensure that our uh, test automation solution, TAS, is ready when we need it for testing our SUT. In simpler terms, it's like making sure you have your tools ready before you start building something. Next, we have maximize efficiency by synchronizing SUT and TAS. Now, here's the important part that to do what we discussed um, in the first point, to do that efficiently, we want everything related to our SUT and TAS to be synchronized. That means making sure that the requirements, designs, specifications, and implementations all match up. It's like having a well-coordinated team where everyone knows their role and timing. So to sum it up, synchronization of development phases is about ensuring that our TAS is ready to test our SUT whenever we need it. And it's done most efficiently when everything is in harmony from requirements to implementation. The next one is synchronization of defect tracking. Defects in SUT, TAS, or requirements, designs, specifications. So this statement states the different types of defects we might encounter. So firstly, defects can exist in the SUT system under test, which is the software we are testing. Next, defects can also be found in our TAS, the tool we use for testing. And lastly, defects can relate to the requirements, designs, or specifications that guide our project. The next point is correcting one defect may affect the other. So when we identify and resolve a defect in one area, it can sometimes have consequences or impacts on the others. So think of it like a ripple effect in a pond. So fixing one issue can create ripples that affect other parts of our project. So what's the solution? So the answer to this question is in our third point. Defect tracking and confirmation testing must address both TAS and SUT. Okay, so we have, we have to keep an eye on issues in both our TAS and our SUT because they both are interconnected. And additionally, we also need to conduct confirm, confirmation testing to ensure that uh, our fixes are working as intended. So this involves retesting the areas where defects were found to confirm that now they have, uh, they have been properly fixed. And the last one we have is synchronization of SUT and TAS evolution. Both SUT and TAS can evolve to accommodate new features, disable features, correct defects, or address changes in their respective environments. Changes made to either the SUT or TAS can impact the other, making it essential to manage these changes holistically. So now let's talk about how we achieve this synchronization. So there are two synchronization approaches that we use to make sure that everything works seamlessly. The first one involves full automation testing and the second one is a hybrid manual automated testing. So now let's have a look at these two approaches in detail. So the first approach, which is shown in this diagram, uh, in it, the two SDLC processes for the SUT and TAS are synchronized in two phases. So we are going through the first approach and this approach is split into two phases. So the first phase is the TAS analysis is based on the SUT design, which itself is based on the SUT analysis. Okay, so in this phase, the test automation solution is designed and configured based on the design of the system under test. Okay, so it's shown over here. So it means that before actual testing begins, the TAS analysis takes into account how the SUT is designed to function. So this ensures that the TAS is aligned with the specific characteristics and functionalities of the SUT. Okay, moving on, the SUT design itself is based on a prior phase of the SUT analysis. So this creates a logical sequence where TAS analysis follows SUT design and SUT design follows SUT analysis. It's like building a bridge according to precise architectural plans. 
Okay, so the next phase is the testing of the SUT makes use of the deployed DAS. So in this phase, the actual testing of the SUT takes place. So what makes this approach unique is that instead of using manual testing methods or other testing tools, the testing process relies on the deployed test automation solution, as we can see over here. So SUT test, TAS deploy. So the TAS, uh, which was configured to align with the SUT's design in the previous phase, now becomes the primary tool for executing the test. So this can include running automated test scripts, simulating user interactions, and collecting the results automatically. So essentially, it means that the TAS takes charge of testing the SUT according to the specifications laid out in the SUT's design. In essence, this diagram's approach uh, prioritizes synchronization by ensuring that the TAS is designed to match the SUT's expected behavior. And then it leverages the TAS for the actual testing phase. So this approach can streamline the testing process and help identify issues or defects in the SUT efficiently given the TAS alignment with the SUT's design. So the second approach is a hybrid testing approach combining manual and automated testing. We can also see that from the diagram there where SUT and TAS, they are synchronized uh, using both automated and manual testing. So let's go through the points one by one. So manual tests precede automation or run alongside. So when manual tests are conducted before automation, it means that the initial testing is done manually. And so this, this allows testers to explore and understand the application thoroughly before automating certain tests. And this is especially useful when the application's functionality is evolving rapidly. And uh, when manual and automated tests are used together, as uh, mentioned in the second part of this point, it implies that certain aspects of testing are performed manually while others are automated. So this approach can be advantageous when some parts of the application are better suited for manual testing while others can be efficiently automated. Next, we have TAS analysis considers SUT design and manual tests. So over here, again, there are two parts, SUT design and manual tests. So let's go through the SUT design first. Okay, so when considering the SUT design, TAS analysis assesses how the automated test can effectively cover various aspects of the system. So this involves understanding the architecture, interfaces, and functionalities of the SUT to determine what aspects are suitable for automation and how they should be automated. Now coming on to the second part of this point, manual tests. So when considering manual test cases, TAS analysis evaluates the existing manual test procedures. So it looks at how these manual tests can complement or transition into automated testing. And it identifies which manual, uh, which manual test cases can be automated and which should remain manual based um, on the factors like complexity and frequency. Okay, next we have synchronization of TAS with both manual and automated testing is essential. So it means that the manual and automated testing efforts are aligned and coordinated. So this coordination ensures that uh, testing activities complement each other rather than duplicate efforts or miss crucial test scenarios. And the last point is SUT testing still requires deployed tests which in the case of manual test could just be the manual test procedures to be followed. So when this, in, this statement mentions SUT testing requires deployed tests. So it means that to evaluate the SUT thoroughly, you must have predefined tests ready for execution. So these tests can include both manual and automated tests depending on the testing strategy. So in the specific context of manual tests, the deployed test can be in the form of manual test procedures. So this means that instead of having fully automated test scripts, testers can rely on documented manual test procedures that outline precisely what steps to follow, what inputs to provide, and what outcomes to expect during the manual testing process. Okay, so with this now, we have 
uh, completed the both approaches, uh, both synchronization approaches. One is fully automation testing and the other one is the hybrid of manual and automated testing. Okay, so now think about that. How will you decide which approach to use in your project? So there are many factors, but the choice will depend on uh, the high level factors would be, let's say the project requirements, resources available and specific testing needs. And just to help you, the few considerations um, for choosing the synchronization approach are, um, are maybe for full automation approach. It's ideal for projects where you have a well-defined SUT design and stable requirements. And it's also suitable for projects with the focus on continuous integration and continuous testing where automated tests can be uh, executed frequently. And it also works very well when you have the when you have the resources and expertise to design and maintain automated test uh, scripts effectively. Now, if we talk about the hybrid approach, it is suitable for projects uh, with evolving requirements or uh, where there are frequent changes where manual testing can adapt more easily and uh, it also works very well when your testing team includes both manual and automation uh, test engineers and uh, it's also useful when you want to combine the strengths of both manual and uh, automated testing okay so I want to emphasize that while the specific choice of which approach to use is not a formal part of our syllabus, I encourage you uh, to develop a critical and uh, practical mindset in your learning journey. As you learn new concepts and techniques, it's essential to go beyond the memorization and truly understand the why behind uh, what you are studying. So ask questions like, uh, why is this concept important? And uh, when and where would I apply it in, in a real life project? And how does it solve practical problems? So this why questioning is a crucial skill that goes beyond this certification and will be very invaluable in your future. So I encourage you all to be very curious and explore the practical implications of what you are learning. With this, we have come to the end of this session. Thank you for joining me and we will meet again in the next session.